Hey everybody, have you ever wondered how to make a white model rendering inside of Unreal Engine 5? Uh, today I'm going to go over how to do that. A couple days ago I was trying to look around and uh, create a white model rendering inside of Unreal Engine and for some reason, I was searching and searching, looking up YouTube videos, looking up uh, documents all in uh, Unreal Engine, and I couldn't really find a, a concrete solution to create just basic uh, white model renderings that uh, ArcViz artists tend to do when it's in concept phase or like early, early schematic phases of uh, projects. Sometimes you just want to get like a you know just like a nice clean white model look, not having like a textures or any kind of lighting. I couldn't really find any any information about about this, and you know that struck me kind of odd because you can do that pretty quickly in Twin Motion. You could do it, you know, really quickly just the uh, you know just using either V-Ray or Corona uh, traditionally. But I was just like, how how can you do that inside of Unreal Engine? And uh, so I, I started doing you know some some work. You know, I couldn't find any any kind of results. Uh, but my my brain kept going back to uh, to this uh, to the, the basic uh, Arc ArcViz uh, template model uh, that they give you uh, inside of uh, Unreal Engine 5 now, and uh, inside of it, it has this uh, this post process volume here that that kind of gets you uh, halfway there. So it kind of gives you this uh, this little bit of a, a cartoony look. So if we go inside of the, uh, the post processing volume here, it kind of gives you like this uh, this little kind of like uh, outline, kind of like a white modelish kind of look. Kind of gives you uh, so if we step back out, kind of gives you like more like the photorealistic look. And then when you go inside, uh, just because of the uh, the extents of the uh, the post processing volume here. Uh, is is not set to infinite. So if we set that to infinite, uh, now we can walk out of out of that that volume and, and the the effect stays. And uh, so I was like, okay, well, you know, this kind of gets me halfway there for the most part. Uh, but like, how how do I get this to be an actual white model rendering, basically? And uh, so I started to try and dive into a little bit of uh, what the uh, what the shader is doing, what what's the material doing, um, and you, you basically kind of need a uh, uh, you know just like a specific uh, material that's called uh, material domain here, the post process. And what this does is only allows you to, to kind of effectively put uh, anything into the emissive color, but. Uh, in in the, uh, the post processing volume here, if we let's see if I can find it, there's tons of tons of features here. In in the rendering features, uh, it's basically just the material applied on top of the post processing volume, and then that's you know applied on top of the, the viewport that gets rendered, and so that's where you get this look. So if we take that that challenge uh, and say you know like we you know not all the time do we have like a perfectly uh, white modeled out uh, uh, project. Sometimes you already have materials built in, um, just because you're you're pulling stuff from other projects. You already have like just, you know take example for for this. You're, you know the scene. You already have like trees. You have a uh, concrete. And you have a site model already kind of built out, and you don't want to go and just kind of uh, you know re retexture everything to to a white model, and then have to go and refine those materials again, or maybe you have to like rebuild a whole entire map just for uh for white modeling you know it, it, this seems kind of kind of crazy uh so i thought this this post processing volume was was a was a really clever way to kind of resolve this uh you know just kind of like a one and done type of a shot but it you know like how do we get the result that we really want um and so i started to dive into into what you know what's kind of going on like kind of under the hood and you know, I'm not good with blueprints at all. Like it's all above my head. Like all this stuff in here, like I understand it to to like a like a very small degree. Uh, but I can understand here just from the, the commented sections that uh, you know we have the, this all all this math in here basically is just all about the edge detection. Over here is just about the the colors. Like uh, so, it's it's uh, basically saying like hey. Uh, take this RGB value here of this color here 
and so it's masking out anything green uh, for the trees here and then it's interpolating between the, uh, the edge detection the color here which is which is uh, going to be your your outline it's just trying to do some more math here like how to how to fade it and how to make it look correctly and I was like okay but what if you know we don't want to worry about like any kind of coloration we just want a, a pure white you know image basically with uh, you know some nice edges like the black edges that we have here to kind of highlight some of the the details of, of the model and I was like all right so let me let me just uh, so I'll just delete this if you just hit the three key and uh, left click this will just kind of give you a uh, um, a three constant and um, you know just made it white essentially and I was like okay we don't need any of this stuff really here but we need you know the outline color and then we need to interpolate between you know the the edge detection and then the color that we want which is white and uh, so I was like okay let's just try that and see, see the results that we get and uh, so let that run and then all of a sudden it went, went black I was like okay so I'm definitely not <laughs> not doing it right but in this scene uh, in particular there's a uh, they have a, an, an auto auto exposure on so I was like okay this is great like this is kind of getting me you know pretty much where I want to go uh, we have you know it's not totally you know, white white for the most part but I can I can then play with that what I did is uh, in this case uh, if you right click on any asset you can take your assets and, and bring it into your projects that you want so you don't have to like completely recreate this whole mishmash of stuff like because like I said like I don't know what you know like half of the stuff is and, and I'm sure you can copy and paste the code but uh, what you can do is go into the asset actions here and then migrate and then you can migrate that uh, over to, to any project that, that you're currently working on and uh, so let's just uh, jump into to this guy and so just kind of like right off the bat this is kind of um, the result that I was getting uh, which is you know not <laughs> not ideal at all uh, but I was just like okay so let's let's kind of like uh, play with this a little bit the master material here that that's controlling the post-processing volume inside of here right now is through the uh, the instance material and it's just, and uh, so it's using the, the material instance and what that's going to allow us to do is if we pull this over here is it will allow us to to on the fly change all these values so like if I want to so if we want to change the values in real time we we can do that inside the viewport here okay and so what I was trying to do again was like okay we don't need this stuff here so we just need to kind of add that add the white and then save that so that's going to apply to the uh, to the post processing volume and to the, to the material instance itself and let's just drag that off to the side so I was like okay so now now we're getting a good result so like in this scene itself like I have a, a better uh, exposure control like it there's nothing like uh, you know too crazy like everything's kind of defaulted out and then I have like a couple of different uh, like color gradings on it just kind of like help out so it's picking up on the material that I have here right so if we kind of, if we kind of go back and let's just hide the post processing volume here so why why is it looking all black like that and it's because like it's picking up on all the uh, like on, like the bump and the displacement of like this kind of lame <laughs> lame rocky material that we have going on here and uh so again you know i was just kind of like setting up this like kind of like little little example because like uh you you know you're gonna have you might have a project already kind of started and you have some materials in it see what, what this is going to look like and sure enough you know there there is some some issues with with the uh with the you know the, the look and feel that that I really was looking for and so if I bring this guy back here and so I was like okay so let's try and figure out if we can adjust like the bias normals that they have set up and the outline color and the outline intensity and try and like you know uh, you know bring the, the intensity up or bring the intensity down and see if like you know that that kind of works um, and I was like okay so that's still still kind of like picking up on on the actual material and I was like okay so 
what if we changed it from instead of lit mode uh, to just lighting only? And then now we get this result. And I was like, okay, this is great. This kind of gives us, you know, a very clean uh, white model look. We're kind of getting like this weird result here because the uh, the faces uh, are kind of like on top of each other here, on top of the, the, uh, the object itself and the edge. So it kind of like uh, does like a weird, uh, just kind of like excludes itself. So I was like, okay, let's see if we can we can kind of take a look at at what's going on, and then inside of the material instance, basically we have use the depth here, and when that's enabled, this kind of like I was playing with this option here, and I was like, oh, this is getting me the, the opposite result of what I was just seeing. So what happens like if I go into the to the master material itself and so I was like okay let me <laughs> let me see if we can really try and understand what's going on here. I'm like okay no I, I have no idea what what any of these values are really but I can understand that they're they're adding a switch here. Basically it's using the depth and then it's saying like true and false. And I'm like, well I don't want it to be one or the other. I wanna add them both together. Uh, even though, you know, like they have it set up to be one or the other, I want them to be added. So I created an add node here. And so what I'm going to do is switch that out instead and uh, override that. And then now if I hit save, let that save. And now we have both both sides. So this way we get a whole whole vision of, of our image here. And so there you go. There is, um, you know, perfectly clean, you know, fairly, you know, you could go back into the, into the material instance again, and then if you want to, to adjust like the, the range of how far out you see, or like the actual, like the, the line, like uh, the line intensity here, or like the thickness of it, you can adjust those values as well. Uh, the, uh, the thickness, <laughs> you can make it like super, super chunky. Uh, where it, you know, it kind of doesn't look look good if you have like detailed models in here, but maybe that is kind of like a a more graphic or cartoony look that you're kind of going for, um, or you can make it you know like super super thin, it's like where you have to kind of have to adjust it just a little bit, uh, maybe 0.75, uh, so you can get like a, a little bit thinner. But yeah, so I think that that works. So there's like a little bit of trickery going on. So you do have to kind of like, uh, you could use the lighting only, or I've gotten really good results with just reflections. It kind of gets, uh, gets like for like some detailed stuff like this, gets you a little bit better results than than uh, the lighting only. I feel, but if you're going into lit mode again, it's gonna pick up on on the textures. But if we rid of like not seeing the bump values or the, the displacement values, and you can do that. You know, just by kind of cheating like that, and then now you get a beautiful result that, that looks looks great for for a white model view for just you know some basic archivist concepts. So I hope that helps somebody out there uh, searching for the stuff that that I was searching as well, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.